Hey guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about Trap Code Mirror. Just because I've been getting so many requests, comments, and feedback on how to use Mirror, what is Mirror good for, and some tips and tricks on using Trap Code Mirror to create some interesting abstract backgrounds and such. So, hopefully, in this video, I can answer some of those questions and show you around Trap Code Mirror. So, first of all, what is Trap Code Mirror? Trap Code Mirror is the newest member of the Trap Code family, which was just released around six months ago in the summertime. And this plugin is very similar to Trap Code Form in a way that they both use fractals, and it's really fractal driven, except Mirror actually uses geometries as opposed to particles like Form. And I'll show you more in a second. But I'm sure you guys have seen a few examples of Mirror on the internet. Um, for an example, this example here. So if I just play this example, It's a very interesting little animation in which the mountain terrain cave here is actually created using Mir, as well as the second spaceship. And this is a very basic implementation of Mir. Um, obviously, a lot of people have used Mir to create landscapes and mountain ranges and stuff like this. So this is a very practical example on how to use Mir in a tra in a terrain sense. And this example is by Red Giant and by Arn Rabinowitz here. So very interesting example. But obviously, this is nothing new that you guys probably didn't already know already. But what I think Mir is really, really good at and where it shines is the ability to create really interesting abstract objects uh, for motion graphics here. So this is what Centerline Media did with this example right here. I'm going to go ahead and preview this example. So as you can see, the background elements here is actually created using trap code Mir. And by just adding some trap code mirror, you can create some really interesting abstract backgrounds that really kind of flows very well with motion graphics. See, I mean, all they have here is mirror, probably a particular particle system in the background, and some few lens flares, and you can get some pretty interesting backgrounds. So this is kind of what I want to focus on today, kind of the abstract elements of mirror here. Now, the last example here is created by myself. I did this six months ago when mirror was first released. And this is kind of uh, my experimentation that I got a lot of requests and comments on about the smooth movements of uh, Mirror here. So let me go ahead and preview this example. And a lot of people were wondering, well, how did I create those nice smooth movements? Because at the time, a lot of people were creating, you know, mountain ranges and stuff like that. So this is what I want to talk about today. Let's go ahead and hop into After Effects. This is another example I did really quickly on how to create these interesting uh, backgrounds here. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. We'll call this mirror. Hit OK. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a background solid and create another new solid for a mirror. And we'll just drop in trap code and apply mirror to the solid. So this is trap code mirrors default parameters. It looks already very interesting as it is. And as you can see, it looks very similar to um, the fractals used um, when creating uh, fractals within form. Except with form here, you would have to create thousands, if not millions of particles to create this really nice solid geometry here. Whereas mirror, it does it very, very quickly compared to form. Because if you were to do this in form, um, it would take quite a while to render and a lot of processing power so this is very interesting and it's also a 3d kind of geometry mesh so i'm going to get a new camera just so we can kind of orbit around this thing so call this camera and we'll just zoom in here looks very interesting off the bat the first half here is geometry. I'm not going to be going through every single parameter just because Peter from uh, TrapCut has done a really great tutorial on pretty much all these parameters here. So I won't go over the basics. I'm going to show you around some of the cool stuff in Mir. So first of all, we have the geometry, which is, I guess, the shape of Mir. And um, here you can control the size and X, size and Y. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size and X right now so we get you know, a longer piece of geometry to work with. Now, when you increase the size in X and Y, what I would recommend you do is to actually adjust the vertices in X and Y to compensate because we extended the geometry. So now we have less vertices per the area of geometry that we have. So we're going to need to increase the vertices to add a little bit more detail to the particular geometry here. And the vertices are the same thing as vertices in a 3D application, essentially more points to add more details. 
And you don't want to go overboard with this uh, numbers here because the higher you put it, I mean, eventually it's not going to make a difference, and but the render time will hit quite a bit. So just adjust it high enough to where you get really nice uh, details and smooth um, edges here, but don't pull it too high because it will uh, increase render time. So the first thing I want to talk about right now is how to achieve kind of a smooth organic movement using Mirror. Similar to the Pouring Roses animation I did a few months ago. So the first thing you want to do to achieve kind of a really nice smooth movement is to adjust the geometry in the fractal to where it already looks smooth. So right now, if you take a look at this fractal, it does not look smooth at all and it doesn't seem like it would move in an organic way. So Right now the frequency is set to 800 and that's relatively high for a fractal. Now if we actually decrease the frequency, we're going to get you know a little bit less of uh, I guess fractal displacement. And so if we decrease it low enough you can see that we've really um, kind of decreased the, the wrinkles in this particular geometry here and already we have a more fluid looking piece of cloth I guess in trap code and mirror. And then the amplitude here is kind of like the amount of fractal displacement. So if we increase it, you can kind of see what it does. It really makes it all crinkled up. So you want to adjust amplitude to just get a very fluid piece of geometry. And then I'm going to go ahead and animate this. So we have the evolution offset X and offset in Y. We'll move forward maybe around five seconds. We'll pull up the evolution. So it's going to animate over time. And then we're going to offset it in X. A little bit and then just raise mirror up a little bit so if I do a quick RAM preview you already get this really nice fluid motion and this may be a little bit too fast but you can kind of get the idea of what we're trying to achieve here so as you can see we kind of have a little bit too much detail in the frequency so we can even lower this down even more and then just like that you get some really nice interesting fluid motion so just adjust some of these things you can also adjust the frequency and amplitude per axis. So you can adjust the amplitude in X, Y, and Z individually, as well as the frequency X, Y, and Z. So enough of that basic stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about how we can make mirror look good. And I think the most important part with mirror is to create lights because by default, um, you're probably not going to get very interesting looks without lights. So let's go ahead and create two lights. I'm going to create point lights. I'm going to create this nice creamy orange one. And we'll call this uh, cream light. Hit OK. We'll duplicate it. We'll change the color to maybe a pink kind of color here. And we'll call this pink light. Hit OK. And you're probably not going to see a difference because we need to go to the materials here. And turn on the fall off so we get some nice shadows with the lights and everything like that. So now we have a little bit more interesting looks. And then now we can start lighting the scene. So usually I like to create a very basic light setup. So I'm going to create somewhat of a gradient. So I'm going to pull this cream light kind of in the front. We can pull this pink light until we get some interesting looks. Maybe displace it over here. And maybe just create something like this. And then you can also adjust some of the material settings in mirror so it's very very convenient you can adjust the diffuse you can darken it a little bit brighten it using the diffuse parameters you can even control the radius fall off so where the light kind of falls off so I'm just tweak this a little bit as well as the distance so this is very very handy you can also change the default color of mirror to something else like red or something I'm gonna keep it at white for now now once you kind of have the basic look set up I think the most interesting part about mirror is the shader parameters and this kind of controls um, you know having a shade how things form together and this is very very interesting here so if we just change the shader from density to fong we get an already different look it looks very slimy it looks very solid it doesn't look very transparent at all and you can achieve a really nice interesting cloth animation um, using the fong shader which gives you a very interesting solid piece of uh, geometry look you also have flat so pretty interesting now I'm gonna go back to the uh, density real fast and then here you have to draw so we can actually fill in the geometry we can also choose to show just the wire frame which is um this is kind of how form looks and it shows kind of the vertices and all that stuff you have the points that just shows you the points 
as well as just front fill and the back is actually wire so this is like a hybrid of both so very interesting I'm gonna keep it at fill and then you have the blending modes and the depth buffer and I like to adjust the depth buffer as well just play around with it and play with the normal and then once you're kind of finished playing around go ahead and pull up the multi sample to um, kind of give it a cleaner look so that's great but how do you create something a little bit more interesting and what I do to kind of create a little more twist in the mirror is to actually bend it and then in the geometry options you actually have the option to bend it in X which kind of wraps that around looks very interesting you also have the option to bend it in Y so something like that and then if you adjust your camera to an interesting position you can get some pretty interesting looks here so if I just kind of rotate it that way like that and then play around with the lighting something like that and then we can go into the fractal and adjust some of our parameters maybe we can increase the uh, amplitude and increase the frequency a little bit and um, already we get an interesting little look here and then we can apply a vector blur to kind of just smooth all this thing out and right now we're just trying to make it look decent and look pretty interesting so we can pull the amount up a little bit and change the vector blur from natural to perpendicular and just play around with the map softness and rigid smoothness and that's just going to smooth out some of the corners and give you a more smooth look and then with that, we can actually um, go and apply some basic color correction. I think the best way to play around with color is to actually use Magic Bullet Looks with Mirror. I don't know, for some reason, I feel like Magic Bullet Looks and Mirror just go hand in hand, especially in motion graphics here. So here I have Mirror and Magic Bullet Looks open. And if we just browse through, you can see that we get a whole bunch of interesting little looks. We have um, like a blockbuster look, which is more contrast and maybe sci-fi and dark. We have something like this. Um, we can even apply some interesting looks such as, let's see here, maybe this gradient sunset look. And as you can see, playing around with looks and mirror, you can really, really just change the look of it all. So I'm going to maybe stick with, let's see here, this buffalo one. Very interesting. And I may want to maybe add a quick little vignette just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And then just go ahead and hit finish. And already we have a different look. So a very interesting look. And of course, this is all um, animated. So we can apply a glow to this thing. So go ahead and apply stylized glow and um, play around with the radius. So already, just like that, you created a very interesting um, abstract little fractal background. And you can use this for your animation for the club or whatever you're doing your projects for. But it's a very interesting way just to create very interesting fractal backgrounds. Again, something like this would take millions of years to render with trap code form just because you're using so many particles. But in trap code mirror, it's actually very, very fast and easy. And it's actually very fun to just play around and experiment with just because it renders so fast. Now, also another quick tip. Um, I've done this in the past before. I know it's not very practical. But if you were in a time crunch and you need to create a very, very fast, very fast abstract background, Go ahead and just blur this thing out. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. We'll call this blur. You can apply a lens blur effect. I'm going to use uh, this one here out of focus and just pull up the radius and um, go ahead and adjust some of the lights to compensate. And just by blurring something out like this and adjusting some of the parameters, Maybe adjusting some of the geometry a little bit. We can increase the size and Y maybe. And stuff like that. It's just some basic stuff. And um, by blurring this thing out, you can get some pretty interesting abstract backgrounds. Maybe this is for your church or maybe this is for um, some kind of text above this. But just by having some abstract moving objects in the background, um, it can kind of really sell the effect of what you're trying to create. It's just, this is kind of like a cheap way to create a background that's not uh, you know pure solid or black but just by playing around you can get some pretty interesting results and just like that you can create 
some pretty unique designs using trap code mirror so hopefully that kind of gave you guys a basic idea on how to use mirror how to use it in a practical motion graphic sense um, so hopefully that helped you guys a little bit and if you guys want more mirror tutorials more specific mirror application tutorials let me know down in the comments below and i'll get to you guys very soon with that but hopefully this helped and hopefully this introduced you guys to mirror just a little bit on what you can do with this awesome plugin so Hopefully that's it guys, my name is Vincent Wynn from the creative dojo.net and I'll see you guys next time.